you, Mr. Speaker. I join the Prime Minister in sending support to the victims of the Brahmahindo Dam collapse in Brazil, and I'm very pleased that all support is being offered to the authorities there to try and deal with that crisis. Mr Speaker, following the vote in the House last night against no deal, the Prime Minister is again going to attempt to renegotiate the backstop on the basis of finding alternative arrangements. Could she set out today what these alternative arrangements might be? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Well, absolutely. Last night the House uh, voted, set a clear direction on the way that the House could agree a deal, and that's why and that is about dealing, as the Right Honourable Gentleman says, with the issue of the backstop. As I said yesterday, there are a number of proposals for how that could be done. My right, uh, we're engaging positively with proposals that have been put forward by my Right Honourable Friend, the Member for Loughborough, and my Honourable Friends, the Members for North West Hampshire, Wickham and North East Somerset. Others, including my Honourable Friend, the Member for Altrincham and Sale West, have put forward other proposals, such as a unilateral exit mechanism. And, uh, I'm just telling the Shadow Foreign Secretary... <laughs> A, a, a point of advice, if she wants to shout things, it might be to in shout them in response to what I'm saying, rather than just uh, saying uh, they, uh, they put forward proposals such as unilateral exit mechanism or a time limit to the backstop. And the political declaration already references alternative arrangements and raises a number of issues that can be uh, proposals that can be addressed, such as mutual recognition of trusted trader schemes. Jeremy Corbyn! None of that was very clear to me. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> But it would, be, it would have been nice, Mr Speaker, it would have been really nice if the Prime Minister had acknowledged that she did whip her MPs to try and support No Deal and was defeated on that. Yeah. And, uh, Mr Speaker, the EU said at the weekend they're willing to renegotiate if the government's red lines could change. Could the Prime Minister today set out which of her red lines are going to change. Yeah. Prime Minister. What has been absolutely clear with my contacts with European Union leaders is that they want a deal. What this House voted for last night is to leave the European Union with a deal, but it also crucially showed what it will take to uh, see a support in this House for, uh, for a deal in the future. I think the plan that was set out last night uh, shows that we can obtain a substantial and uh, a sustainable majority in this House. But the Right Honourable Gentleman talks about not being clear about positions on various things. I'm very pleased that he is now going to... I'm very pleased that he is now going to... Uh, I'm very pleased he's now going to meet with uh, me, and there are a number of issues that I want to discuss with him. For example, he talks about a strong single market relationship with the European Union in the future. Uh, he, but he was also... I, I want to know whether that means he wants to accept all EU state aid rules, for example, because in the past he's objected to state aid rules, and he can't have it both ways. So we need to know with greater clarity what it is the Right Honourable Gentleman believes in, and perhaps, perhaps next time... Perhaps next time one of his own backbenchers wants to ask him about his position on a second referendum, he'll actually take a question and an intervention from it. Yeah. Mr Speaker, last time I looked at the order paper, it said Prime Minister's question time. Yeah. And the Prime Minister has herself, has herself, and I quote, the only possible deal was within her red line. So it's perfectly reasonable to ask which of her red lines has changed. This morning, the Brexit Secretary was asked, and I quote, what is the alternative to the backstop? He replied, well, that's what we're exploring. <laughs> Can the Prime Minister tell us which options are being explored? Yeah. Prime Minister. I think I missed them in answer to one of the earlier questions the Right Honourable Gentleman gave me. Perhaps also, if he listens to the answers to the questions, he, he wouldn't have to repeat the question. Jeremy Corbyn! Looking forward to meeting the Prime Minister later on today. Because I want to put forward Labour's alternatives, which could command a majority in this House, and are about protecting jobs and the people's living standards across this country. Mr Speaker, this morning the Brexit, uh, Brexit Secretary, Brexit Minister rather, said that alternative arrangements means looking at technology. 
very interesting question. So can the Prime Minister be very clear what technological advances is she expecting to be made in the next 58 days? Prime Minister! Can I say to the right honourable gentleman, it would be helpful. It would be helpful. I want to hear about these matters. The Prime Minister. The right honourable gentleman, I have pointed out that there are a number of options that people are putting forward that we are working with them on and working positively with them on. I have already referenced a number of things that are in the political declaration on alternative arrangements that do set out various aspects that could be looked at. I referenced one of them in my answer to his, in my answer to his question earlier. But what I would also say to the right honourable gentleman is that he, you know, last night the House did vote to reject no deal. But it also voted to do what the European Union has consistently asked this House to do since it rejected the withdrawal agreement, which was to say what it was that the UK wanted to see change. Last night, a majority in this House voted to maintain the commitment to no hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland, to leave the European Union with a deal, and to set out to the European Union what it will take to ensure that this House can support a deal. That is a change to the backstop. That is what I will be taking back to the European Union. That is what we will be doing to ensure that we can avoid no deal. He stands up regularly and says he does not want no deal. I am working to ensure we get a deal. He has opposed every move by this Government to get a deal. He is the one who is risking no deal. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, I would be grateful if the Prime Minister would actually acknowledge that the House has voted to take no deal off the table. And can she assure the House that if she is unable to secure any legal changes to the backstop, that she would work to find a solution based on a comprehensive customs union, a strong single market deal and the guaranteeing of rights and protections, rather than go back to the alternative that she's been threatening everybody with for months and months, which was to crash out without any deal whatsoever? Prime Minister! Last night the House did vote to reject no deal, but that cannot be the end of the story. The only way, the right honourable gentleman says, of course not. I think, that's the, I think that's the first time he's actually accepted that you can't just vote to reject no deal. You have to vote for a deal. Otherwise, you leave with no deal. So far, so far, he has opposed everything this government has put forward in relation to a deal. And he said, he said previously he will reject any deal that the government uh, puts on the table. Will he, will he now? He says it's Prime Minister's questions, but people want to know his position as well. Will he ensure that if this government comes back with a revised deal that ensures we don't leave with no deal, he will actually support it? It really is time, Mr Speaker, that the Prime Minister acknowledge she's got to move on from the red lines she's put down in the first place. And she doesn't acknowledge that in answer to my questions or indeed anybody else's. Mr Speaker, our responsibility is to bring people together. Whether they both... Mr Speaker, we are the Houses of Parliament, we are the House of Commons, we do represent the entire country, and the point I'm making is we should bring people together whether they voted leave or remain. And indeed, I look forward to meeting the Prime Minister to discuss a solution that could, in my view, unite the country. Changes to the backstop alone will not be sufficient. Businesses and trade unions are very clear that any solution, any solution must involve a customs union and the strongest possible deal with a single market to avoid the damage of no deal. The Prime Minister may have possibly temporarily united her party, but is she willing? Mr Speaker, is... Order, order, Mr Ellis. You were at one time a barrister of one rank or another in the courts. There is no way that you would have been allowed to shout 
from a sedentary position in that way, and the judge would have ruled you out of order. I don't know whether that's why you stopped practising law and came into Parliament. <laughs> Behave yourself, young man. You can do so much better when you try. Jeremy Corbyn. Speaker, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> The Prime Minister may have succeeded, may have succeeded in temporarily uniting her very divided party. But, Mr Speaker, is she willing, is she willing to make compromises necessary that are more important, and that is to unite the country on a, a going forward to secure jobs and living standards right across the UK? Prime Minister! Can I, can I say to the right honourable gentleman, he's a fine one to talk about coming together when it was only last night that he agreed to actually meet me to talk about these issues. And he said, he, he's, he's, uh, time and time again, he's told me to listen to the views of the House. He's just stood up and said the backstop is not the only issue in the withdrawal agreement. Uh, last night, the House voted by a majority to say that the issue that needed to be addressed was the backstop. So he, he needs to listen to the House and to recognise that. And his proposal last night, he put forward a proposal last night which referenced the customs union, the single market, and his proposal was rejected by this House. But I'll tell him what this government has been doing. Over the last week, we've been getting more teachers into schools. We've been ensuring we're giving more money to councils. We won a majority on Brexit. What did he manage? His Brexit plan was voted down. He opposed ending free movement, and he won't rule out a second referendum. He's no plan for Brexit, no good plan for our economy, and no plan for our country. 